Hello guys, welcome back to the Seven Engineering YouTube channel. Please subscribe our channel for daily Seven Engineering videos. In today's lecture, we are going to discuss the topic of load transfer. Load transfer that how the load transfer occurs in the RC frame structure or the reinforced concrete frame structure. So I'm going to explain this with the help of clearly an example so it will be more easy to understand. So this is any kind of RC reinforced concrete frame structure. What is mean by frame structure? Frame structure means that it has beams, columns, footing and also the slab. Such type of structure is known as the frame structure. So now in this case you see here the vertical member is a column. The slab is a this flexion member which where the people loads or the furniture load is coming. And then we also see a beam horizontal member here is a beam and also we see a foundation here footing and then beneath the footing we have a soil. So this is footing. So now how we can define or explain the load transfer in a common reinforced concrete frame structure. So let's take this any kind of one story building. For example, here we have a two story. But let's suppose I took only this section of the building. And I'm going to explain this here, the load transfer mechanism in this part of the building. So first I'm going to consider the slab, which is this one. So here is the slab system. It may be one way slab or two way slab. And then below the slab, below the slab we have beams here. You see here these horizontal members are the beams provided. So I'm going to provide here the beams. They are exactly below the, below the slab. So here are the beams on four edges. And now the next one is the, so if I name them red, so these are beams. The other one were the slab, the first one. Slab may be one way slab or two way slab depends on the design condition. And then below the slab we have columns here. So these are the vertical members. Here and here we have four columns. You see here these vertical members columns. So these are the columns to resist the vertical load. And then below the column we have another member which is a footing. It may be isolated footing, combined footing, strip footing, depending on different conditions or depending on the load conditions and also the bearing capacity of the soil. And below this footing, we have soil. So here I name it footing. And this is known as the column. So now how we can define or transfer the load in our RC member. So when the load acts on this part on this slab system, for example, here are the people coming on this slab system or the furniture load or any kind of live load is there on this on this slab system. Because slab system here is the main part that where the load is coming, yeah. This is the main part for living. Uh, there may be a people living or maybe just a, a computer there or maybe a different kind of furniture are there. So this is the slab is the main part where the living space is provided for the people. So when the load is coming on the slab, it directly transfers the load to the beams. So this slab load transferred into the beams here on four edges because we have four beams. So the load is transferred from the slab to the beams because the reinforcement is provided from the slab into the beams. There is a connection of reinforcement from slab into beams. So that's why the load, when the load comes, it transfer from the slab section into beam section. If I do it more, if I do it more correctly here or more uh, in detail. So for example, if I draw only with one color, it will be more easy. For example, this is the frame structure and here is the load acting. So when the load acts, what happens on the slab? It transfers it to the beams on the four edges. So now you have load also on the beams on four edges. And after this, the beam don't take all the load, but it has to transfer the load into another structure member because it is in the air. It cannot take all the load. So what happens? It 
transfer half of the load in this direction and half of the load in this direction into the columns. So similarly, this beam transfer half of the load here and half of the load here. And the similar way, half of the load is transferred on this column. So half of the load is transferred on this column. So now the load is transferred from the beams into the columns and it goes like this way. So we have now, similarly, if I draw it here, so from beams, the load is transferring into the columns. And in the next stage, when column take the load, what will happen? It is a vertical member to resist the axial compression load. It will transfer the load into the footings. So now what happened? We have a footing here of any dimension. So now the load is acting here on the footing. It transfer the load into the footing here. And if I draw it here, for example, this is a footing, footing, footing. So now the load is acting here on the footing. So this is the way how the load transfer and the reinforced concrete members or the reinforced concrete structures. And after this, the load is distributed into the soil where soil it depends on the soil bearing capacity. This is the soil. So load is transferred into the soil and the distribute and takes the load depending on the bearing capacity of soil. So this is the main um, explanation for the transferring of the load. So the slab is the main part where it, the load comes and then it transfer to the beam. Then it transfer to the column, columns, beams and then it transfer to the footing depending on the design and then it distribute the load into the soil. So this is the general mechanism for the transferring of the load from the slab into the footing. Hope you guys understand and don't forget to subscribe our channel for daily civil engineering videos. Thank you for watching our video.